Hello and welcome to another of our STS technical support series webinars with today's topic, the STS 24 inch and 13 inch shakers. Now for those who don't know what this equipment does, a shaker uses an automatic process that evenly distributes a key element, TPU powders, onto a printed surface area of a design recently printed using a DTF printer and then gels that powder inside a heating tunnel, which can then be transferred onto most any garment. Now let's take a closer look at the 24 inch version. Uh, as you can see, the footprint is 69 inches in length, 43 in width, and 40 in height. So approximately 745 pounds. The, now the shipping weight and dims are 72 inches, 45 inches, and 41 in height, and about 820 gross pounds. Uh, some of the features of this unit are... So as you can see here, this is our media sensor, which locates the printed media as it repels from the printer, which in turn allows the shaker to interface both units, which then begins the process of pulling the media upward and through the system to be powdered, shaken, and gelled to complete the transfer prep process. The shaker locates the media about 10 inches off the floor or 25 centimeters off the floor to engage the threading cycle. So a great feature for autonomous printing direct to film. Here we have our wheel locks for the 24 inch shaker. So if you wanna loosen the wheel locks, you're gonna wheel this red cog towards you and it lifts up on the rubber stopper. If you want to tighten it and allow the shaker to be more stable, which we recommend when you're printing, you would turn it the opposite way as you can see. And now that rubber stopper lifts the shaker a little bit off the ground so it's, it's firm. Here we have our vacuum cylinder. So when you'll see later, when I thread this unit for the first time, this is the thing I get it to, the vacuum cylinder. It'll hold the media down in position and allow me to address the TPU powder and the weighted scale, which I'm gonna show you next, and allow the system to start its operations. Now inside here, you can see the weighted scale. This weighted scale primarily will hold the TPU powder. So you can see this is gonna move up and down. And the reason for that is so that the system understands when it has enough TPU powder in to pull it through the rest of the process. It has to have 100 grams of TPU powder in here. So if you have a long workflow, you wanna make sure that you have enough TPU powder in the hopper so it can evenly distribute that TPU powder as you start to lose your TPU as it moves through the system. And you'll notice here too, we have a touch screen for the 24 inch shaker and also our 13 inch shaker and our 48 inch shaker have a touch screen. A lot of the units that you may see in the open market out there have manual uh, controls, you know, dials and gauges and those types of things. We don't have that here. We wanna make it easy for the customer. So this is the best way to do it have a touch screen, simplified. We, 90% of the time, will use this system in automatic mode. The only time that you would use this in a manual mode is when you're starting your workflow, when you're threading the unit to the vacuum cylinder, or when you're ending your workflow, when you wanna cut your media and have it pass through the system. Keep in mind, do not leave the unit unattended in manual mode. You've always got to stick inside that unit when you're playing with it in manual mode because you really, manual means manual, it's not automatic. The automatic setting, you don't really have to worry about it. All the temperature settings, everything that you need are pretty much here. You can change them if you want to. If you have a workflow that you're thinking that the fan speed is too fast or the tension's too high, again, we set this up for you in the beginning. But if you see have a workflow that has some different criteria or different requirements, you can change it if you want to. So it's very effective. Utilizing the touchscreen makes your life a lot easier and really makes this into a really an automatic uh, shaker that you don't have to keep, keep watching every two seconds. And that's one of the benefits of our unit. Here we have our internal HVAC system and it's in every one of our shakers from the smallest to the largest. Uh, this is all built in. You don't need any external filtration units now. You just unscrew, lift up a little bit, 
And there you have it. Uh, the HEPA filtration, charcoal filtration are behind this door here. Uh, so behind this plate, as we saw earlier, is the filtration unit. So I have an HVAC and a HEPA filter inside this drawer that we replace once every eight months or so, depending upon the workflow. And there are screws here that mount this to the door of the HVAC system. So you just have to unscrew this and then pull the top off here and we can get these uh, uh, new filters for you uh, in a heartbeat. Right. Here we have a recycling drawer. So all the material, the TPU powder that falls and then is shaken off from the transferred surface area, in other words, the TPU powder you don't need on your transfer, falls into this recycled drawer. So primarily all I can do when I need to use this uh, additional TPU powder to restock my hopper, I'll just pull this out, open up top, and then dump it into the hopper. Close up, and we're ready to go again. So TPU lasts a long time. Also have, of course, here your automatic take up, which is connected to uh, the dancer bar at the bottom, which I'm going to show you soon. And uh, primarily just works in sync with the printer as the media progresses. It tightens it up. It doesn't pull on the media unless, of course, you have it on manual, which you got to be careful. Don't ever leave it on manual uh, unattended. And we're going to go over those things later. But this is something that's really effective for you. If you have some a long workflow, you can have all your material on here and um, your workflow will be nice and safe uh, on that uh, take up wheel. Here we have our dancer bar on the rear end of the shaker. Uh, it is connected with the take up reel. So when the media is coming out, uh, the media will drag out on the bottom, the dancer bar will see that and then pull up on the media to allow the roll to tighten, as you can see right here tighten itself on automatically. So any uh, loosening of the media, it notices that if, if, if the dancer bar moves up and down and obviously will begin to roll. The minute that that bar is up in the stop position, the roll will stop, so it won't just keep rolling. So you can see my print job is down here now. So now I have enough media to feed my 24 inch shaker onto the preheating table here. And you, as you can see, I'm not really concerned about the first few. Again, most of the time you'll use a two foot, maybe th two and a half foot leader. So you don't have to worry about anything because you, and the key element here is you don't want to be pulling that media while it's printing. I don't, the more I pull it, the more taut it gets, the more chances I run uh, having a head strike. And that's not something we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'll open my hopper table. And then I'll just slide this down to the bottom. Make sure it's even. And let's get it up to the vacuum cylinder, which is all our starting point. Make sure I have enough media for my duster. Put that in the, the tunnel there and I'm ready. At this point, looks like I'm good here. Make sure you've got plenty of slack here before you start to push it on to the automatic mode, which is gonna get everything in rolling again. So I think I'm looking pretty good here. So we'll go auto. CPU's gonna load now. I've got plenty of slack. And there we go with our loading. And that's great. Now again, the cylinder will pull continually once I get that media down to that level where the sensor sees it, and then it'll pull it through the system and we're ready to go. So I don't have to really worry too much about it now. It's gonna do its job and uh, we'll check back a little bit. Okay, as you can see, my print runs are coming out. So what I'm gonna do is set up my roll now. So what I like to do is, thing to remember is you need to be underneath that bar the dancer bar okay and it goes over the top like this so I just set it up even Steven mm -hmm. 
Okay. That's good. And then I turn my roll on. And guide it through. And you're all set. So not only do we have a heating section here, but we also have methodology not to use all the units at the same time. They come on as they're needed, as the temperature requires. So you've got these filaments turning off and on as you need them. Also underneath, I've got four underneath here as well. Makes for a perfect transfers. Now, if you recall, the only two times that we feel it's comfortable to use manual mode, of course, 90% uh, of the time you're gonna use it in auto mode, is, is in the beginning of your workflow and of course the end of your workflow. So you can see I've cut my media here and now I'm gonna take it the rest of the way. My workflow is completed. So I just wanna use the shaker to, to uh, apply the TPU powder and heat it and gel it and then allow it to be placed on the take up reel and I'm done with my workflow. So primarily I'm in manual mode here. So everything we're gonna start, make sure that everything is going. I press the buttons here and now I do my feed and the vacuum cylinder is now gonna take the system, the, the media, right through the system. And of course, the reason it's gonna be able to bring it through the sensor on the front sees that there's media down there, but it doesn't really matter at this point because I've got it on manual mode. I turn my dusting off. I don't need any dusting. I've got plenty of TPU powder in there. So once you start to use this equipment, it's a give and take. You kind of can see what you have. You kind of balance out your needs. You, you change your requirements if you need to. Uh, we can help you with that. Your distributor can help you with that. Their technical support staff can help. But once you get into that groove and depending upon your workflow, as I say a million times, depending on your workflow, you can really set this really, uh, these requirements to your benefit. Now again, you don't leave the room, you're on, auto, on, on manual setting, automatic you can leave the room, but when you're on manual, you stand by. Now if I look at the back of this system, my wheel is rolling up all this media onto the take up reel. We're gonna go back there and I'll take a look at that. Uh, and so you can see what that looks like. But as you can see, my, my media is being pulled right through the heating chamber right in here. And that's our objective. Shaker shaking off all the additional extra excess TPU. I see no TPU here. You don't want to see any TPU anywhere else but on the transferred surface area. So this is a really nice system. Okay, so now we'll take a look and see what it looks like on the roll on the back. So as you can see in a manual mode, my wheel is turning every time the material is coming out. This is also a vacuum plate here to keep my media tight. Comes up underneath the dancer bar. Remember when you're threading this, the thread underneath the dancer bar. It has the ability to control the media output of the wheel itself. So keep, keep in mind, a lot of times people forget. They just go and they roll it up onto the wheel and then they wonder why it's not working. The dancer bar communicates to the system when it's time to roll. Also, when you're looking at this, make sure that the gear is locked in here, right in the middle. When you're loading this roll, this wheel is locked into this spot. If it doesn't fit right, it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. It fits perfectly into this roll here and that gear allows it to turn, okay? So this is in manual mode. I'm finished my workflow. I'm getting my material out. But you see it's not stopping. 
That's why we do it. That's why we do it in manual mode. That's why we got to make sure that you're protected on manual mode. You're always here when you're working with manual. Okay, one thing to remember, now I'm in manual mode. Now this is the end of my workflow. You gotta be very careful here. This is why we want you to remain with the shaker. As you can see, the vacuum cylinder is gonna release this media when it gets to this point here. It's suctioning now, but the minute it releases, it's gonna, the media is gonna shoot right through there. So what I wanna do is preempt that and it's very simple to do that. So I've got this here, everything is working fine. I wanna be able to control this and I'm gonna do that from the rear, okay? From the rear of the shaker, I'll show you how to do that. Now, now that I see it's getting close to releasing, I'm going to the other side. Okay, now there's my roll, my take up. Now if I listen carefully, I can hear the vacuum cylinder starting to release from the media, and it already has. So I have to have my finger here, ready to control the material on the way out. I'll take my time. And this is how I protect the rest of my transfers. They're being heated through the chamber. And there's my last transfer right there. And again, what I usually do is I usually turn up the heat a little bit when I'm at this level because I'm not, my transfers are not engaged in the heating chamber for a long period of time. So I usually turn the heat up. I can always control the speed of this with my hand, but I don't wanna lose those last transfers because a lot of the time if you don't do this, if you're doing it on manual, you're gonna lose some transfers. And there we go. On to my take up and ready for action. Depending on your workflow, we recommend performing a walkthrough of your equipment operations. Then if required, run some simple maintenance cycles that primarily involve internal cleaning or some calibration. Now, if you're gonna engage in internal cleaning, the first thing you wanna do, of course, shut your equipment off, unplug it from the wall, and then you can start. So what we wanna to try to do first, I'm gonna go and take a close look at cleaning this unit. Uh, we recommend, depending on your workflow, now we clean ours probably four to seven days, you know, every time we're, uh, having a workflow, we're in our equipment, cleaning this out and maintaining this, this unit right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unlock the HVAC chamber. There's a little screw here at the bottom that's gonna allow me to open up this unit. And you'll get your towel and simply just dab away at some of the areas in this unit, especially down here. This is where the HVAC system is connected to the heating chamber. This is where you get some buildup of the glycerin that is a catalyst in the ink process for the white. Make sure this is all clean. Your engagement tube here, of course, you wanna just dab that out. And you can see some of the material here. This is what we wanna try to dab up a little bit as you, as you, as you can see. Then I wanna open up the unit. You see, I still have my workflow in here. So usually, usually when you're doing this, you're not gonna have your workflow sitting in here. And primarily the buildup that you'll notice is pretty much on the sides, up here where the lighting required are. You can see this area here needs to be wiped down a little. Especially in the back here, as you can see. This builds up and may drip down if you don't maintain it. So it's really a good thing to do to just every now and then just dab it away. Okay. And there you can see what I'm talking about. And that's pretty much it as far as cleaning goes. Just close your unit back up. Now the filters are in here. So you've got your charcoal filter and your HEPA filter inside here. 
in one unit that could be replaced. We replace ours uh, approximately every uh, year or so, depending on, of course, on your workflow, but you would just unscrew these, pull the unit out, and then just replace it back in. It's very simple to do. And then we lock it. Now we'd like to introduce the latest version of our 13 inch shaker. Uh, the shaker has gotten a little bit bigger, as you can see. Uh, the length is 57 inches to the take up, all the way to the preheating table, 26 and three quarters in wide. And that's the reason because we have a new HVAC system on here that's internal and 24 inches high. The table that we use on this is just a standard table, 19 inches tall. So it has a nice flow to our 24 inch STS 628D printer. Uh, this is the flow that we like. Uh, it seems to work the best. We're about 11 inches from the printer on this one. We're probably about the same on that. And that all depends on your workflow and what your requirements are to determine exactly what distance you want. But you, want, you don't wanna to be too far away. You just wanna be enough that there's a loop there that the seeing eye can see it on the front on every shaker that you use, whether it be the 24, the 13, or even the big 48 inch shaker that we have. So. Well, let me show you exactly what we've got with this and uh, we'll move on. Let me take a quick look underneath, underneath the hood. So you've got your four nichrome lights here, got three in the bottom, cooling area here, nice uh, addition, these Lifts really help to lift and shut the, the hood very easily under control. But, you know, this is the setup that you're going to have when you buy the 13 inch shaker from STS. And now let's talk about the features of the 13 inch shaker. So some of the features of the 13 inch shaker, just like the 24 inch shaker, uh, you've got your media sensor here in the front. So if you look at this table, we're 19 inches from the floor on this table. And so with that in mind, our sensor sees the media 24 inches from the floor, just to give you an idea of the, the uh, height that you're usually gonna have. So this table is, uh, readily available as well. So you're gonna to have to have something to put the, the unit on. So ask us, ask our, your sales guy about a table for your shaker. We, we, we can obviously uh, get you one here at SCS as well. So that's an awesome feature and it allows the unit to connect to the printer. You've also got above this, you've got a preheating plate that comes in and heats the, to a temperature of about 85 to 90 degrees, depending upon your requirements but it's nice to get the curing process started right here. Uh, just like you have your heated platen on your printers here from SDS. So uh, very significant uh, in your production uh, abilities to have quality product at the end. So we have a vacuum cylinder, just like you see in the 24 inch, also in the 48 inch unit. Uh, we tried to make sure that the units were similar in design and engineering, we thought these were the best things to have in your shakers uh, to make them the most efficient and the most automatic pretty much is, is the uh, end game for us. You've got also the same type of weighted scale at the bottom to make sure you have 100 grams of material uh, TPU powder in them. That's a fail safe. If you don't have 100 grams, it's not gonna pull through. So you gotta make sure that in your hopper here, you've got enough media, or excuse me, not enough TPU to drop onto your transfer at the bottom. So we have our touch controls on our 13 inch shaker. Again, carbon copy for our 24 inch shaker as well. Very easy to use. Uh, this is a manual mode. Here's your automatic mode. Again, manual 10% of the time for loading and finishing your workflow automatic for your daily use. So 90% of the time you're gonna be in automatic. Uh, you do not leave the shaker in manual position. So primarily what I can do with this easily is I can engage 
anything I need. I can feed, shake, I can do, do all this stuff in a manual mode. But again, remember, it's in manual. It's not gonna stop. Automatic, looks like everything is still lit. The reason is, this is the seeing eye in the front is gonna align with the dancer bar in the back so that it's gonna stop the workflow when there's enough workflow coming through and then start it again, stop, start, like you normally usual will see. Here's your heating temperatures. We got 97.7 Celsius on ours. All these temperatures and all these settings that you're gonna notice on here, we set those for you. If you have different requirements, you can obviously change these just by tapping and then putting in a new number. So if you think 90, uh, you were starting to see your, your, your media crumpling a little bit like a potato chip, so you wanna lighten that load a little bit, lower that temperature to 90, and it's as simple as that. All the other controls have that same uh, ability for you to manage easily through this I.O. And there you have it. A nice new feature that we've got here is the new internal HVAC system for the 13-inch shaker. Uh, this is our latest 13-inch shaker version and no more need for the external air filtration unit. It's already built inside here. Another great feature too that will help you with your maintenance cycle is the removal of the glycerin that collects in this HVAC system from the the uh, gelling of the TPU powder and the white ink, uh, just a residual of that. So this, you hook this up to a tube, open it up, and primarily it will accept the, the, the oily substrates uh, that you're gonna get from um, the heating and gelling of the, of the glycerin. And there you have it, you have a lock, and it works really perfectly. Of course, you guys already know, you've got a recycling drawer here for your TPU powder. Uh, it's been redesigned uh, and very effective in reusing your TPU powder. You're noticing that's really clean. That TPU powder is pristine and it's been in there and out and in and out, you know, a number of times in the past week or so. So we're, we're really excited about it. And it's such an easy way to uh, Reuse your TPU powder. Again, it's, you can use TPU powder. We have, you know, one kilogram lasts for a long, long time, so. So also in the back, we have our newly designed automatic take up for the 13 inch shaker. Uh, keep in mind when you're loading this, make sure that the grooves are inside and you've got a nice little plate in here that allows it to slide right in. Uh, same dancer bar that you notice on the 24 and 48 inch shaker too. So uh, real simple to use, configured perfectly for the shaker uh, as an autonomous unit. One of the key features of the 13 inch shaker is this rear section where you see our take up wheel. I also have an adapter that we can replace to this section here. And as you can see it, Primarily, this adapter is gonna allow this rear feed to be pulled through where the dancer bar is, through this system, and it connects directly with the sensor and the front sensor so that you know exactly as you're pulling through and you wanna do your, uh, your transfers immediately, you could just pull it through instead of having to roll it up on the wheel. Uh, this is very, very efficient, and it's uh, easier to use if you have a workflow that you wanna transfer immediately. Okay, so we're almost ready to load the 13 inch shaker. Now, what you notice here too, as it's printing, the distance between the bottom of the preheating table and the shaker is not that far apart. If I put my tape on it, I can show you a little bit. And again, this is a personal preference. About 11 inches. Depending upon where, how your setup is and how much footprint your, your facility has, you really just wanna make sure that you've got that loop down there. That's all you're looking for. So now as I load this to the vacuum cylinder, and again, you can have a two foot liter or however much of a liter you want because the first 
If you're, if you're gonna print right to the transfer, right to the edge, you're gonna probably lose that transfer unless you're very, very careful. So now that I've got it to here and I'm in between the weighted scale, those guides are doing that, I dust. I'm in manual mode, remember? And I've got plenty of space here, plenty of loop. Don't forget, we don't want to pull it so tight that we have a printhead strike. So make sure that you have plenty of a loop. Don't rush into it. And I think that's good. You want to get this material over the top of this silver plate right here, okay? This, this steel plate, make sure that your meat is over the top of that. You don't want it to roll underneath. That can happen too. So let's go auto and we're ready to go. And it's as simple as that. So that little criteria that you use when you load or when you're ending your workflow are very effective for your workflow during that day, okay? Okay, so now on the back end, take our media underneath that dancer bar now you can see you, you, one thing you have to make sure you have when you're doing this kind of work is make sure you have some cores you know if this is a, a larger like a 13 inch core actually probably a little larger than that but whatever core you need a core Without a core, you're going to have a problem. So make sure you keep your old meteor rolls so you can use them again, just like the 24 inch. Without a core, you're going to run into trouble. All right, so I have that set up and now I, I get my roll going with one click. And it's ready. Okay, so that's how you load the media onto the 13 inch shaker. Okay, now as you can see, we're in the final stages of my print job. My workflow is done. So I've cut my media from the printer. And now again, as we talked about earlier, we're in manual mode. So the only time you're gonna use manual mode usually is when you're starting, feeding your, your shaker, and you're completing your workflow. So you're cutting the media from your printer and you're just gonna take it through the final stages. So primarily what I'm gonna do is just watch this come through. It's gonna go through the system. The vacuum cylinder is the target area, just like we did in the 24 inch, the target area is gonna be the vacuum cylinder. The minute that starts to release, you need to get on the other side of your unit and control its process through the heating chamber, okay? So again, here we're in manual mode. We're on the flip side of the printer. We're on the roll side here. So now you can see the roll is gonna turn as material starts to progress. Uh, the dancer bar is doing its job, so we don't have to worry about that. But again, and this is the beauty of the 13 inch shaker. I can see both sides in just in one position. So I can see how much more media I've got coming through the vacuum cylinder. I also can touch and control it from the bottom of the heating chamber too when I get my media almost through the vacuum cylinder side. So we just gotta stay here and finish our job before we leave, okay? Okay, you can see now. We're almost there. So when this releases, it's gonna shoot through. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my hand on the opposite side and this is gonna allow me to control the media when the cylinder releases. And I always listen to the sound. The cylinder has that hissing sound that it gets more powerful because it has nothing to now it looks like it's releasing. I can feel it releasing. And I'm just going to guide it the rest of the way. There it is. The sound is off. And I'm just guiding it now. And you can see this is all the TPU powders gelled on there already. So I don't have to worry about that. I still have my other transfer in the chamber right now. I'm going to let that sit for just a little longer because it's a little slow. 
My take up wheel is keeping everything tight on my roller. And you, get, you guys get the general drift of how you have to do this. It's in a matter of, you know, touch. You know, you just gotta do it a few times to get the idea of how you're gonna structure this and, uh, but it's the best way to do it. Just take your time on it. Okay, it takes care of that. So as far as maintenance goes on the 13 inch shaker, it's all pretty much in this section here where the gelling process occurs. So you unlock your HVAC door for your internal HVAC system and then you just take a simple paper towel and just dab in the certain areas here where some of the oily substance that you'll get from the gelling process occurs into these sections in here and so on. And then that's pretty much it for there. Thank you very much for joining us on this, uh, for this STS webinar. We're gonna be back with other webinars with some other tips and tricks, uh, things that you can use for the equipment that we have behind us. And uh, let us know if you need some help uh, for anything, any technical support issues that you might have, just let us know, let your distributor know first, of course, if you have a distributor you purchased that from. But from, from, uh, from our perspective, we're always here uh, for all our customers. Thank you so much.